grown deeper with the years? It never changes. It never changes. It's really kind of like, you know, when you haven't seen somebody that you were in love with for a long time and they walk into the room and, and as much as you try to be not affected, you are affected. And that's how we would make it, you know. And when the five of us, like, did this video that we just finished, you know, when we all start to walk up, there's a definite hush that goes over the room and over my own soul also, you know, that is very... Like being a part of an incredible gang, you know, like like being a part of an incredible club. And probably that's why the incredible club is still, is, is not broken up, you know. For whatever will happen in the future, I don't know. But for right, for today, you know, and all the days before, it's never been broken up, no matter how bad it got. And you've certainly talked to me over the years enough times, you know, to... To know that I mean, God, I want you know, I want I wanted the world for Fleetwood Mac. I wanted the world to understand and know and enjoy our music, and I would never change that. How about responsibility to fans? Was that part of the motivating factor of going in and doing another? You mentioned contracts. As far as I'm concerned, it was all the motivation. Because, again, the only way that you wouldn't make a record is if you everybody really didn't care about that. If you, everybody really only cared about their own selves and their own selfish endeavors, there would have been no we would make record. Everybody would have been out being selfishly involved in endeavors instead, completely. I didn't feel that what I was doing was selfish. I felt what I was doing I had to do. Because, you know, I mean, the reason Mick and I are out, you know, in Steamboat Springs playing for 200 people is because we don't know what's happening. Mick is of the old school of, when you're bored, book a tour. And he just goes out and plays. And I can, I'm welcome to go anytime I want. So I feel I'm, you know, I'm a zoo member now. And I love being a part of Mick's zoo because all you have to do is have a car. <laughs> and you can go. <laughs> It's too large an apartment. Oh, that's that too, you know. Somebody's ringing the doorbell now and there's nobody to answer. <laughs> Just so, forget Shall it. we pause? Yes. Yeah. We better. It could be Mick rounding up musicians for the next zoo gig. We'll be back in a minute with more Fleetwood Mac off the record. I'm Mary Turner. <laughs> made their official debut 20 years ago at the Royal Windsor Jazz and Blues Festival in London. The lineup was Jeremy Spencer plus three former members of John Mayall's Blues Breakers, Mick Fleetwood, John McVie, and Peter Green. Mick has never forgotten that they had a hard time luring John away from Mayall's group. John knew that we wanted, you know, Peter wanted him in, in the band. I mean, that was, that was the original thing, and that, John said he just held out. <laughs> Turner. 
And for the next hour, I'll be talking with Mick Fleetwood, John McVie, Lindsey Buckingham, Stevie Nicks, and Christine McVie. They're doing a tango, and they've agreed to let us watch Fleetwood Mac off the record. rhythms, proof that they're still a super group, the harmonies are more beautiful and seductive than ever. There haven't been so many superlatives in Fleetwood Mac reviews since the days of rumors. Mick Fleetwood and John McVie are very pleased with the response, but not completely surprised. The album, to me, feels, what's the word, well-rounded. There have been albums, uh, Mirage keeps being brought up in various interviews, poor old Mirage sort of taking up all the slack and a lot of, you know, and it's, uh, I don't come down, it. no, it's, it's not, I don't think it's a bad, there's a lot of really good songs on there, but nonetheless, it isn't as complete as, say, this album, and when you're able to be retrospective, or whatever the word is, looking back, I, I, I would say, pick out an album, the first one we did on Warners, then play on, is an album that felt very complete, that you can feel something when it's happening, you think, this this is, cause, mainly because you've had the experience of looking back on a, a stockpile of, of work that you've done, and you can feel the same sensation coming around, it's like when Fleetwood Mac first started, there was, there was definitely a certain energy that one knew something was happening. This is going back to Peter Green days when he started the band. You know, when Stevie and Lindsay joined the band. You, we all felt a certain thing. Yeah, and then Stevie that and Lindsay joined. Right. That was even before anything was down on tape. Yes. Yeah. If this is right, this is something lovely in here. And that applies to the album. The albums making comments about albums. You know, and Mirage is definitely t- taking up the slack because it was in between. And it was, in a way. It wasn't as adventurous as the Tusk album. And if you like, this is, is vaguely a, a point between using what the band is as, as a band and yet being um, adventurous.